Hello friends, welcome back to Cosmopolitan Cornbread. Ah, thanks for joining me here on this very warm and muggy late summer day, or almost evening. I thought I would bring you today up to one of my favorite little quiet spots here on the homestead. I, I have a few of them. There's, there's some great little spots here that I haven't shared a whole lot with you guys. My favorite spot is all the way up at the top, but it is far too late in the day to head up there because um, it's already nearing sunset. I don't know if you can tell from the color there. The sun is about half a hand's breadth from the top of that mountain over there to the west. But I thought I would bring you out here just to kind of have a little bit of a chat. Um, for those of you who are newer here, um, we moved here to the mountains of Arkansas last year. We closed on our papers in January. Um, a couple weeks later, made the announcement letting everyone know we were giving up our Alabama homestead. I know it came as a magnificent shock to most people. Since then, I, there's been um, several times here and there, on again, off again, where people ask me, do you miss your homestead in Alabama? Um, do you miss living in Alabama? Um, I've had people say that they miss my Alabama homestead. Um, do I miss the Alabama homestead? Of course. Do I regret the move? No. Is this property as easy as our Alabama property? Of course not. We're living in the mountains. But I don't regret the move. And, and I have a video where I explained all about my thoughts on regrets and looking back and all of that. Um, suffice it to say, I don't want to be Lot's wife because I 100% believe that the Father called us to be here. And because of things that have taken place since we moved, personal things that I don't share with all of the interweb, even though people think I ought to, I know it was the right thing for us. But do I miss the Alabama homestead? Of course. You know, we were an army family. We lived all over the place. Um, we lived in North Carolina, Alaska, Germany, uh, Virginia, Texas. And, you know, looking back, there's, there's things that I probably miss from several of the houses that we lived in. Some of them not so much, couldn't wait to get out of them. But there were places that we loved in our army life. Um, absolutely loved living in Alaska. Um, there's, I joke all the time. Well, I don't joke as much as I used to. I used to joke all the time that there was still a piece of my heart buried in the snow up there on the tundra. I will always love Alaska. Um, would I have loved to have stayed there forever? Oh, a thousand percent. When we went to Alaska, we actually thought we were going to stay there forever. We, we did not plan on coming back to the lower 48 or outside Alaska, as they say up there. But we did. Um, we, we came back down, um, ended up in Alabama, which is my husband's last duty station. And when he retired, that is when we bought what we thought was going to be our forever home. And, you know, I loved that home. Um, I loved taking that house and that piece of land and just turning it into, for the most part, my dream, my dream property. I grew up in the city. Uh, I grew up as a city mouse, but I was always, always meant to be a country mouse. Um, I've had a couple people recently asking me how I got started homesteading. And the truth of the matter is, and if you've been around since I first started homesteading, you know this. Those seeds were planted in me by my grandma Ingalls, who was a young widow, but she was very self-sufficient, very independent. 
Um, I always thought of her as the mean, strict grandma, but really I'm the most like her. And I, I miss her terribly. I, I miss all of my grandparents terribly. But I was the most like her, and she gardened, and she canned everything, and you know, she was super frugal. And she lived out in the country with farmers for neighbors. And so when I, I think of my grandmother, she was really kind of the first introduction I had to homesteading. Now, she didn't have animals, she didn't have chickens or anything, but she loved it when I got chickens for the first time. As a matter of fact, I have a video that I shared, gosh, it was our first year in the Alabama homestead where I had come across the very last letter she ever wrote to me. And I read that letter on camera and she was so tickled that we had chickens. So it was partly my grandmother and it was also the Little House books. Interesting that both of the last names were Ingalls. <laughs> um, I always, you know, I, I read the Little House books as a child. I read the Little House books to my, my kids when they were young. And I always felt this affinity to Pa because Pa wanted to live out in the middle of nowhere. He didn't want to be in town. He didn't want to have a lot of people around. He, he wanted to be able to hunt and, and do all the things. And, you know, I remember Ma wanted to be closer to town where there was civilization and all of the, all of the culture and all of the things. And how Laura kind of had that connection with Pa Ingalls too. And so I always felt this kind of draw. And so I attribute my desire to homestead to my grandmother and the Little House books. Hi, Nubsy. I, I heard you coming up the mountain here. So when we got our property there in Alabama, um, you know, we thought we were planting roots forever, had zero intention of leaving ever. I, I joked all the time that someday you'd find me keeled over in the tractor seat and that's where I was going to stay. But the father called us here to Arkansas. Now, when I first started feeling the leading for us to leave the Alabama homestead, I was devastated. And I held on just white knuckled fingernails. I didn't want to let it go. But ultimately, I turned it over to the Father. And because I, I believe, looking back, I had turned my homestead almost into an idol. And the Father needed to fix that. Now, is that why we came to Arkansas? I don't know. Like I said, there's been things that I had prayed about for a very, very long time. And when we started moving, some of those prayers were answered. Things I'd prayed about desperately, cried for years over, and the Father started answering. And so here we are in Arkansas. We're in the Arkansas mountains. Um, we live in the mountains, as you can, I don't know if you can see the terrain in this, in this video behind me, but there's pretty much nothing flat here. It does make it a challenge, but, you know, if the Father wants us to be here, then we'll be here. But, I will tell you this, this homestead, this house, this land, I'm not holding this with a fist. I am holding all of this with an open hand because letting go of our homestead, even if it's letting go of this homestead, if the Father calls us to do something else, we have to be obedient. It doesn't mean it won't be hard, that it, that it won't, you know, I won't shed some tears. But whatever the Father calls us to do, I want to be obedient. And I don't know. I can't say I'm going to live here for the rest of my life. I think I'm getting too old to move. <laughs> I don't want to keep moving. But I hold the Alabama homestead. 
I hold this homestead. At this point, I'm holding everything with an open hand. And if the father wants it to go somewhere else, and then it'll go somewhere else. That will go somewhere else. I had someone reach out to me several months ago, maybe even a year ago. And, and they told me they actually had a dream about me, which is kind of weird, <laughs> but they did. And in the dream, there was, we were here at the homestead and there were like, I don't know, men with guns and all this stuff dressed in, in black coming through the woods and like surrounding our house. And, and, and it was like not a good scenario. And I, and I can't remember the details of this, of this email that I got, you know, in the dream, but she felt compelled to warn me that we shouldn't be willing to give up our lives over the homestead. And I thought it was interesting that she was telling me this because I thought maybe she was trying to warn me. And I don't know who this person was. I, I don't remember their name or anything like that. I don't even think that they were somebody who had been a subscriber to my channel. They just shared this dream with me. But what this person didn't know was I had already decided this homestead is held with an open hand. I'm not going to knuck white knuckle it. And if the Lord says do something else, then I don't want to. At this point, I am just putting everything in the hands of the Father. If He wills for us to stay here the rest of our lives, so be it. If us coming here is only for a season, if it's a stepping stone for something else that He wants, so be it. I hope He doesn't call us to go to the city because just visiting cities practically gives me hives. <laughs> but whatever the Father wants, I want to be obedient. When, when I knew that I had to lay down the Alabama homestead in, in the hands of the Father, I didn't know yet we were, we were going to be moving, but I knew I needed to lay it down for the Father. I, I said in prayer, and I meant it, if you want us to sell everything and live as nomads, I would do it. And I meant it. I want to be obedient. Whatever the Father's will is in, in our lives, that, that's all that I want anymore. There, there's two things that I want in my life, truly, that are the most important things. Number one, I want to be obedient to the Father. Number two, I want my family to know who He is. And that is the, the two most important things in my life. Everything else pales. Everything else pales. I would give everything, everything up for those two things. Love God and love my family. Letting go of the homestead in Alabama, yes, it was hard. And of course, there's things that I miss about it because it was my first real homestead. Now, we had a farm, a farmhouse that we had rented years ago, but it wasn't ours. You know, it, it gave us the taste of homestead life. That's actually where we lived when my grandmother wrote that letter about the chickens. And we loved it. I mean, that just gave us the taste of homesteading. You know, I was, I was canning. I was baking my own breads and milling my own grains and and homeschooling and, and all of the things and it was just the dream life for me. But it was temporary. It wasn't ours. We didn't stay there forever. Um, that was in North Carolina. We later moved to Alaska and then we moved to Alabama. And you know by the time we got to Alabama the kids were grown. My oldest was already done with school. My my middle child graduated on the way to Alabama. We, we did a, a family graduation with the grandparents. Um, you know, they, were, they got to present him his diploma and, um, and then our youngest graduated shortly thereafter in Alabama. Um, so we started that next journey, you know, pretty much as empty nesters. But it was still my dream life. It was, and this time it was ours but it wasn't forever. 
And I'm okay with that. There will always be things I loved about the Alabama homestead, you know, remodeling the kitchen and building the things and doing all the stuff. But now that farm, which we had named a good life farm, now that's someone else's dream. Now that's someone else's good life. And I know that they are thriving there. Matter of fact, I just got another email from the family who bought the Alabama homestead and they're just doing so well there. And they're expecting their first little girl before too long. Um, when I knew the father was calling us away from that homestead and that we were going to be moving, I began praying for whoever it was who was gonna live there. I prayed that they would thrive. I prayed that they would feel the presence of God there. And that if they didn't know who he was, that they would meet him there. That they would give their lives to him there. And, you know, that precious family, when they moved out there, the husband was a believer, the wife was not. And a few months later, she got baptized and gave her life to the Lord. And I wept when I got that email. And someone had said, well, maybe it wasn't about you leaving, but maybe it was about them going there. And that could very well be. I am at peace with it, whatever God's purpose was. And I'm at peace about this place. If it is forever, wonderful. If it isn't forever, whatever the Father wills. Whatever the Father wills. Because I hold it with an open hand. And I know I've just kind of been rambling here <laughs> this evening, um, just, you know, kind of touching on some of the things that people have asked me and sharing a little bit of the backstory. But, you know, I had changed my priorities and, and, and what things were important to me and what weren't. And ultimately, it comes down to, do we trust the Father? And I can tell you, having moved here, my faith, my trust in the Father has grown exponentially in the last couple of years. Exponentially. I trust Him more than I ever have before. And I trust Him no matter where we go or don't go. And letting go of the homestead I think was part of it because I had allowed that homestead to become too important. Beautiful as it was, I didn't have my priorities right. And if you don't have your priorities right, if you start putting your faith and your trust in your stuff, whether it's your homestead, your garden, your pantry, your second amendment tools, whatever it is, if you start putting your trust in those things instead of the Father, He might just rip them out of your fingers. So, <laughs> like I said, I'm in a completely different place than I was a couple of years ago, figuratively and literally. And I am looking forward to whatever the Father has in store, wherever it is, whether it's here or not. So with that, I am swiftly losing light. The sun is behind the mountain over there and Nubsy is staring at me. It's time to head in. So thanks for joining me out here for a little bit of a chat. My name is Constance from Cosmopolitan Cornbread and I'll talk to y'all next time. Hi, baby. You ready to go up and get fed? Are you hungry? <laughs> All right, buddy, dinner time. Let's go.